morning and welcome to Jesus Family Worship Center Live. Good morning family, we are so glad that you can join us today and a very special welcome to all the beautiful, God-fearing ladies out there. A very happy Women's Day to you. We pray that you will have a blessed day. Uh, we pray that uh, your families will spoil you today and hopefully you will get a day off from the kitchen and your day in Jesus. What do you say, Pastor? <laughs> yes. Well, to the family of Jesus Family Worship Center, welcome. We really miss you guys. Um, it's been like months now. We got, I think we lose touch. Uh, we really miss every single person. You are very special to us, and you can be rest assured. Every single morning, we cover you with prayers. Every single day, you my prayer. We pray for you. We pray that God will bless you. God will help you, and God will strengthen you, and God will take you from victory to victory. And to those that are watching us from other churches or you just tuned in this morning welcome thank you so much for tuning in to, to, to listen to us and to watch the service live this morning and we pray that you'll have a blessed time amen looking good again today Nisha. very pretty today god bless you on this woman's day i pray that um, god has great things in store for you and i have a great word this morning and i know it's going to bless each and every one of you ladies out there but also for the men as well amen but with that this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice we will be glad i just love church i cannot wait to get back into church and to begin to worship the lord and to praise him again i thoroughly miss, uh, miss the fellowship the i mean everything about church i really do i i can't wait to get back to church amen and i'm sure you too as well but this morning we're going to make the best of today we'd love for you to stand up and, and do whatever you want to to worship god put your hands together bless the lord praise him glorify magnify his name today he is worthy to be praised amen so with that won't you stand or whether you're in bed i don't know where you are but let's just close our eyes and just commit this time to the lord father we come to you this morning in the name of jesus thank you lord for another great opportunity that we can do this lord that we can come together lord wherever we are because we know that god you are omni present this morning and lord you are here in our home you are in everybody else's home today jesus and we thank you holy spirit that you are there and i pray that everyone will sense the presence of god they'll sense the warmth of your love they'll sense lord just oh god your presence the peace of god in every home this morning father bless us today as we have church lord as we lift up our voices and worship you and praise you listen to your word whatever we do today we pray that we bring praise and glory and honor to your name bless this time we ask in jesus name amen so won't you just get involved with us pop up the volume and let's have good praise and worship together welcome everyone it's gonna be a great day come on let's put our hands together right here
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how we need you. You stay the same. You are good in your ways. Jesus, Jesus. Trust is in you, Lord. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah.
hope that was good praise and worship. It's always wonderful to praise the Lord. And we've been doing something new. Every single night, we actually, um, on TV, what do we do? We, we, we play songs and we sing off the, off, off, off the TV. Um, you know, the smart TVs, they're very smart. I even don't even know all these things. But we really have such a fantastic time worshiping the Lord. And we just sense the presence of God, His, uh, uh, His sweetness there, right, Lisham? And we really enjoy God's presence. So I pray that you would just get a CD or, still got CDs, right? Um, or MP3 or whatever you get, but just listen to, to worship. And I promise you, you'll be so blessed. The stress will go, panic will go. All these things that are bugging us today will just go in Jesus' name. So it's so wonderful to worship the Lord. Well, uh, this morning we want to just take an offering, um, a normal, our tithes and offering. And we just want to share from the word of the Lord. And uh, as always, I said to you that um, we really thank you for those that sow into our ministry. Thank you so much for those that tithe, so those that give offerings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also, um, I sent our church uh, in Westville. We've got a food bank. And I'm just so, I don't know, I'm just so in awe of your generosity. And I know that even people that are outside, we do coffee with Jesus. And so many people have been serving directly to the food bank on behalf of Jesus Family Worship Center. I don't even know that, but I thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. And we shared the stats. And you know, it's like 47% of the people are unemployed. Can you believe it? And 19% of people are basically because of gender-based gender violence that comes for food. Isn't that, I mean, almost 20%. That's such a high number. And that's really concerning, Lisha. Even on this National Women's Day, yes, we got major challenges. So we can see if I add the both, 47 plus 20, you can say that 67% that is like unemployed gender-based violence i mean that is crazy and you know what i also found interesting was it is not only conducive or it's not only for christian people everybody's benefiting i saw like the stats for people that are from pakistan and even um african people that are not from Af from, from south africa but from africa they'll be giving it's probably like about five percent you know thank you so much you don't know what you're doing so thank you so much for serving and then from our side um, we started building and i must be honest it is really really costly uh, you know, every time I look at it, it's just cost goes up and up. And we're just believing and trusting God for investors. In fact, I'm looking for investors. If you want to invest in the kingdom of God, you're a businessman, or you want to help us with steel and concrete or whatever, and you want to invest in us, please contact us. I will share the plans with you, share the vision with you, and you can be part of the building process. We'd love for you to, to, to partner with us. So you want to know how we do it? You get onto our website, www jfwc.co.za right and when you get into the website there's a there's a tab that says giving you click on it and that's how it tells you how to give you can give via snap scan or you can give via eft so we we basically begging you but we're really asking in the name of the lord jesus that you will sow into the ministry we can build a building for the glory of god amen thank you so much in advance by faith we believe this building will be paid for in full in jesus name Amen. Amen. So, Nisha, you got a word for us this morning. Yes. Um, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, it says, For God, who gives seed to the farmer to plant, and later on good crops to harvest and eat, will give you more and more seed to plant, and will make it grow so that you can give away more and more fruit from your harvest. Here the Apostle Paul assures us that if we follow a consistent lifestyle of giving, the Lord will see to it that our storehouse of seed is continually replenished. Why? So that we will have more and more seed to invest, to produce more and more fruit. Not so we can live in luxury and ease while the rest of the world goes hungry, but so we will have more and more fruit to give away, to meet the needs of others. And that's the Christian lifestyle, giving and receiving, Amen. being blessed to be a blessing, Amen. prospering for the sake of all Amen. those in need. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I come before you today in the name of your precious Son, Christ Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you for every single person that is um, listening to the word today. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, that you would bless each person, even as they purpose in their hearts to mm -hmm. give today. Thank I pray, you, Lord, that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, yes, that you would the increase their storehouses. Thank I pray, you, Lord, that you would provide for their every need. 
today, Lord, I even pray for the building of our church. I pray, Lord, that yes. whatever we need, Lord, that you Thank will provide you, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that every single cent that is needed, mm. Lord, to yes. build this church yes. for your glory will be provided in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I just thank you today. Bless thank each person Jesus. as they give now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I hope that you enjoyed praise and worship. And uh, as we know that praise is our weapon and we overcome by worshiping and praising the Lord. There's nothing better than being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And so this morning, before, we, before I share the word of the Lord, won't you just lift your hands wherever you are this morning? Won't you lift, look, look up to heaven this morning and begin just to worship the Lord for a few moments. And even as we bring all those that are sick this morning, those that have been affected, infected by this COVID-19, those that have lost loved ones, those right now that just need a personal touch, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether you just need some counsel from God, let's just lift up this time in the name of Jesus. Father, we just come to you this morning and we're so aware of your presence. We're so aware of all that you do for us, oh God. You're a loving Heavenly Father and we love you this morning. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those that are sick this morning, Lord. Father, we send your word and the Bible says that by your stripes, oh God, we, were, we are healed. The Bible says that I am the Lord who heals you. The Bible says that healing is the children's bread. And so we pray today for every person right now that is sick. We ask you, oh God, that you would heal in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, the Bible says, according to your faith, be thou made whole. And we believe in the promises of God. We believe in your word today. And we believe, oh God, that you are healer this morning. Those that need a job right now, I pray for them, Father. I know right now, Lord, jobs are so hard to come by. We know businesses are closing down and businesses are in business rescue. But Father, we pray this morning that every person that is unemployed right now and is seeking a job, that Father, in this week, that you would open doors and the doors that you open, no man will shut them. And so I pray and I pray today, Father, the job that they're seeking, Lord, Father God, the benefits and the perks with it, whatever they desire will be theirs in Jesus name those Lord that just need um, a, a miracle in their marriage or their business or finances uh, Lord in every part of their lives we just pray help them this morning in the name of Jesus we pray for for our schools Lord even as they resume again and even as our children go back to school oh God uh, we pray for every child we pray that father you will cover them under the blood of Jesus Lord you cover the teachers you cover their the school properties and 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 the, and the areas, oh God, that Father, there will not be not be this uh, the, the the spreading of this virus in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we just commit all this to you, and we believe in you that you are our protector, you are our God and Savior, and we give you all the praise and honor and glory, Lord. As I share your word on this National Women's Day. Lord, I pray that, God, you would speak through me. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have a word for every woman today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this morning, it's my joy and privilege. Uh, I want to talk to you about um, Rahab. And, um, and, and the title of my sermon or message this morning to you is, Let God Write Your Story. And so we all know today is August the 9th. Uh, 2020 and in South Africa we celebrate National Women's Day. So what is Women's Day? What is it all about? Women's Day marks the anniversary of the Great Women's March of 1956. Um, March of 1956 where women marched to the Union buildings to protest against the carrying of passes or pass books. On the 9th of August 1956 about 20,000 women March to the Union buildings in Pretoria to protest, as I said, against the legislation aimed at tightening the apartheid government's control over the movement of black women in urban areas. And then I, I, I also read that um, today, I mean, it's International Women's Day, um, and, and in 2020, the theme for the women are I am generation equality uh, and also realizing women's rights. So, Women's Day is a day dedicated to honoring the achievements of women throughout the history and all across the globe. And it's typically a day for women from all different backgrounds and cultures to band together.
to fight for gender parity and women's rights. And so this morning, in fitting with that, what is the Bible says and what does God say in His Word regarding women? And so we're going to take up our story this morning. And there is a woman in the Bible. Her name is or was Rahab. And Rahab's life, when you read about it, was a very disappointing life. But God turned it around. Um, it was, she was a prostitute. And, you know, to really be strong about it, the Bible calls her a harlot. Not only was she a prostitute and a harlot, but the Bible says she was also a Canaanite woman. And Canaanite people were hated, uh, or they were hated enemies of, the, of, of Israel. And not only was she a Canaanite woman, the Bible says that she was also a liar. So when you look, up, look at this woman, she never had a good story. She never had a good uh, life. But something happened about this woman. And the Bible says that she ended up being the great, great grandma or grandmother of Jesus Christ. Now, this is phenomenal. A woman with a very bad story, terrible story, disappointing story, suddenly became the great grandmother of one of the greatest leaders on planet Earth. And that is Jesus Christ, who today you and I serve. So, how did this happen? That's a good question if you're asking me, how did that happen? Well, the Bible says, the Bible says that there's a story behind her. So, what would she say if Rahab was here today? And if Rahab was addressing you on this woman's day, what do you think and what would you think that Rahab would say to all women today? Well, she probably would start and say, probably, my life was dark. My life was disappointing. My life was so destructive. I hated my life. My past was so bad. But something happened. You see, you see, she would say, when you are feeling disappointed with your life, then God has a beautiful story for us. But the sad thing is that today, many of us write our own chapters. And so she has this to say, but my life was such, but something happened. And so we read in, one, in Psalms 139 verse 16, it says, Your eyes saw my substance. Meaning that God, you saw my substance. You saw me, who I was, being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written. The, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. So she basically says, so Rahab is saying, I had a bad story. I was writing the, my own chapters in my book. But then I realized that my life was so horrible. And you know, maybe we just stop there and pause. Her life could have happened as, I don't know, the Bible does not give details of how Rahab ended up being a prostitute. There's no uh, recollection, there's no detail in the Bible that tells us how she became a prostitute. And, uh, but, 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 but the reality is, she became the great mother of Jesus, great grandma of Jesus. So when I look at it, so what she's really saying, I had a disappointing life, but I know that God has a story for every one of our lives. And I realized when I was writing the chapters in my book, it was terrible, horrible, disappointing. Uh, I, I, I cried tears. And maybe that's how you feel. But she says, I realized and I gave the pen of my life to God and said, God, you now write my story. And that's why in Psalms 139 verse 16, he says, and in your book, they were all written. And that's what she did. So, but just think about this. She had a bad story, but in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5, we read that Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. And Boaz became, begot Obed by Ruth, and Obed begot, begot Jesse. So the next time that we read about, about Rahab, we read about her in Matthew, where he tells us that she became the grandma of Jesus. Amen. So I'm sure if Rahab was here today, she would be saying, let God write your story. Let God write your story. Let him do it. Give him the pen and let him write the story. Interesting, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, very famous scripture, we read that it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Very interesting, it talks about an author. An author means that somebody wrote a book. And so she was saying, give your life to God, give your life to Jesus, give the pen to him and let Jesus be the author of your story, of your book. And God does have a story and God has a book for us. So she basically says, get the pen out of your hand and put it into, into the hand of God and let God write your story. So this morning, Rahab's story, let's listen to some of the keys that we can draw from Rahab on how to write our story. So the first point that I'd like to share this morning is that God searches for you to be in his story. Amen. God searches for you and for me so that we can be in his story. You see, what is the story about? It's, 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 about, it's about God correcting the course of our lives. It, when I put the pen into God's hand, God begins to change the course of my journey on earth. You know, when I think back of, about my life, I grew up in a Christian home. Both my parents were Christians. They loved God. But when I was growing up, I actually really didn't know about God. I knew that there is God out there. So I was sent to Sunday school and diligently I attended Sunday school until I grew up and then church was right opposite my house. So my parents wouldn't go to church on a Sunday, but they would ensure that my brother, my sister and I would cross the road and go to Sunday school. So I only went to Sunday school because my parents were standing at the door and watching me go to church. I mean, if, if I'm in church, I can't run away. I had to be in Sunday school. But as soon as Sunday school was over, I was gone. Began to do my own thing. And so never really had uh, a relationship with God and then we ended up moving to the CBD of Peter Marisburg living in town and they're being open to a lot of things and then also bad company I began to smoke I began to drink uh, I, I, I smoked uh, Dachau for a couple times because we are desperate of all this and then my life was really not going well and so I was 15 years old and, I, and I'll never forget the day is that one of my friends it was his birthday and so he decided to go buy a quart of beers and I think, I'm not sure, we call it a straight, straight of, I don't know, brandy or cane or, no, I don't think, I think it was brandy. And so we bought alcohol. And that entire day, being 15 years old, we drank the entire day. And I'll never forget, it was towards the evening, my friends decided that they want to go to a nightclub. Well, not nightclub, it was a house party. And so because we lived in town, um, there were um, community centers where people used to have parties and we would gate crash being town boys boomtown rats we called ourselves and we used to go to these parties and so that evening I got so drunk that I actually felt the drunkenness in my bones I actually felt it and when my friends were going to go to the to 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 a gate crash a, a party I said to them guys I cannot make it you know I don't know how I went from my friend's house to home but it probably was about maybe about a kilometer or less than a kilometer I practically I think I actually crawled home because I was like saturated with alcohol that I felt it in my bones and when I got home I could remember just hearing my mother complaining and shouting at me and my dad and the next minute I went straight to bed and I was so drunk and I think I spewed on myself during the night but during that night I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom but during that night I just had this constant voice saying to me go to church go to church tomorrow go to church and so i was just groggy and in the next morning when i got up my dad comes to me and he said to me he said you heard what happened i said no and the room was stinking of alcohol and he said to me one of our friends was critical in hospital and he said to me go sort yourself out let's go to the hospital to see him and so like with a heavy head and i changed my dad told me nothing and we got, got to North Hill Hospital, we go and we see my friend there and what happened was they went to one of a party and I'm not sure what happened but he got severely beaten. But thank God in those days uh, they didn't have guns so it was really about knife and whatever and so he got really plastered by somebody. But you know throughout that morning I had this constant voice saying Robin go to church, go to church, go to church, go to church. And so that evening I went home 
And opposite my house, as I said, was church. And I thank God that we had church services on a Sunday night. And so I was there and I decided to go to church. I went and I sat right at the back of church. But that evening, something happened to me. God searched for me and God wanted me to be in his story. I gave my heart to Jesus in 1985, 15 years old. And today when I look at who I am, I'm preaching to you today because God sought for me and to put me in his story. You see, in your darkness, God searches for you to be in his story. Amen. Rahab lived in the wall. Moses was dead and Joshua was going to take over. Joshua took over from Moses and the Bible says that they camped in a place called Shittim and Shittim was in the valley, uh, in the Jordan Valley and across Shittim was a place called Jericho. And so Joshua sent two spies to go and spy out the land because they wanted to take over Jericho. And the spies hid in Rahab's house. The Bible says they, 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 they hid in Rahab's house, which was constructed in the wall. Joshua chapter 2 verse 1 says, Now Joshua, the son of Nun, I hope he, I mean, it says son of Nun. I mean, that's funny. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged, and lodged there. So they came to her house. The spies came searching for her. They spied out the land and they told her, we want to stay with you tonight. So, so Rahab was not looking for them, but they searched for her. Read what the story says, that they went to her. They went and searched for her. Noting this, she was a Canaanite woman. They hated Canaanite women. She was a harlot, right? But the Bible says that they went looking for her. So she just happened to live in the wall of the window. Uh, she lived, happened to live in this wall with the window. And then God said to her, let me have the pen. So God searches for you in his story. They went to her. And then, you know, the Bible says in Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. See, today when you open your heart to God, she must have been crying out to God. She must have been, I don't know, miserable, horrible, maybe being abused from men after men after men. I mean, you know the story of a prostitute. We're not going to discuss that. But imagine her life was so bad. But she probably cried out to God. And the Bible says that God just, helped, I mean, God sought for her. That's what the Bible says in Revelation 3 verse 20. Right now, you could be in the same situation. But the Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So God is saying to you, how about you today? Maybe you got a horrible story too. Maybe everything is against you. But won't you open your heart to God and say, God, I want to give you the pen. Lord, it's about time that you start writing my story. But you know, the second thing that you need to understand is that God's spirit does not always strive with man. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. And he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. You've got to know that God will come and knock on your door, but he won't do that forever. You've got to open your heart to him. That's why John 15 verse 16 says, You did not choose me, Jesus said. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So, so Rehab is saying to you, God searches for you to be in his story. And I believe right now God is searching for you. And it's simple. All you got to do is open your heart to him and say, God, I've been writing the chapters in my book. But God, it's about time. I'm giving you the pen. You write the chapters in my book. Amen. Number two, she would tell you today, God always makes a way for us in his story. Number one, God searches for us, but then God makes a way for us. They, I mean, the, the, the spies came to her house. The spies came searching for her. They spied out the land. And then the, they told her, Listen, we want to tell you today, you tell anybody that we hear, because the Bible says she took the spies and she hid them. She covered them with, with, with some uh, uh, flak or barley or whatever, some, something of that. She just covered them up. And so when they came looking for them, she lied and said, no, the men are gone. 
and they when, and, and then they told her to tell her you tell no one about this but if you tell we will come because we're coming back to destroy the land and she told him she said sirs please don't kill me don't kill my family and the bible says in joshua chapter 2 verse 17 to 21 listen to what it says so the men said to her we will be blameless of this oath of yours which you have made us swear unless when we come into the land you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down and unless you bring your father your mother your brothers and all your father's household to your own home so it shall be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the street his blood shall be on his own head and we will be guiltless and whoever is with you in the house his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him and if you tell this and if you tell this business of ours then we will free be free from your oath which you made us swear then she said according to according to your word so be it and she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet cord in the window you see god makes a way for us to be in his story the word saved what does the word saved mean it means this this is what you do so in other words to be saved i've got to do something and the Bible says here, interestingly, that they said to her, we want you to put a scarlet, a red, a red, a red, um, a red cord. We want you to put a red cord so that when we come, we can see the red cord. And that's exactly, what does that mean? It talks about the cross of Jesus. Because when Jesus hung on the cross, he shed his blood. So today, God makes us a way for us that even though your life is so bad, even though you're disappointed with the story of your life, but today we have the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that will make a way for us. Amen. And when you look at this whole story, the Bible says they came back. And they, 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 they marched around Jericho. And the Bible says the walls came tumbling down. But go read your Bible. The Bible says only Rahab's house was saved. Isn't it tells you the same story about the Passover? When they saw the blood, when the angel of the Lord saw the blood, he passed over them and they were not affected. So today, God makes a way for us. How? Through the blood of Jesus why because she Rahab, applied the blood of jesus she didn't know prophetically by putting that 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 scarlet cord the red cord that she was applying the blood of jesus so if you don't like your story today wherever you are there's only one way out and that is the blood of jesus you know i love the scripture romans 8 28 says and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. You see, God had a plan for her. And God has a plan for you today. God can take your bad story and turn it around. She thought, God just saved me. But God says, no, I've got greater things for you. You see, many of us today, we think when we get saved, that's it. I don't believe that. I believe when we get saved, God is saying, right, now you've given me the pen to now write your story and God gives us a story amen that's why my third point is God's story always has a redemptive ending what does the word redemptive mean it means better than you think redemptive means better than you think so when we get saved God is saying no I've redeemed you but now I'm going to do something with your life I'm going to give you a story amen that's why we talk about history his story you and i will have a story one day when we die one day when we go home to jesus and 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 and, 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 and if we uh, uh and and you know what happens is that then we leave something on this earth we, we leave a story and people will know you for your history your story you see god does not want to save you only but i believe god wants to do something great in your life when you get saved it is the beginning of your spiritual journey amen so Imagine this lady, she became the great grandmother of Jesus. The next time we read about Rahab, we read about her in Joshua. But the next time we read about her in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. And interestingly, she is among 42 dads, fathers, grandfathers of Jesus. But why do you think Matthew is the only gospel where we have a genealogy and in this genealogy he lists all the fathers the grandfathers of jesus but he only writes four women he put four women in there and why do you think matthew did that well that's a good question so let's see why why do you think that because what you need to understand matthew was a tax collector 
And because he was a tax collector in those days, being a tax collector, that was a bad story. That was like he was really, really a bad person. So he also had a bad past. So therefore, when he was writing the book of Matthew, he decided, no, let me put people that I can identify with. So that's why we read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 3. It says here, Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron and Hezron became Ram. So the first woman we see is Tamar. Then it says in verse 5 and 6 it says, Salmon begot, begot Boaz by Rahab. Number 2, Rahab. Then Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. And then it says, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. So we read four women. Number one, Tamar. Think about Tamar. Tamar had a very, very dark story. Her husband died. And the Bible says that she wanted to, and she wanted a child. What did she do? She acted like a prostitute and she slept with her father-in-law Judah. So she never had a good story. But imagine she became the great-grandmother of Jesus because she gave her heart to Jesus and said, Lord, you take my pen and write my story. Then we read the second person is Rahab, a harlot, did the same thing. And then we read about Ruth. Who was Ruth? Ruth was a Moabitess, not a, Christ, not a Jewish person. But the Bible says a non-Jew and a terrible story too. But the Bible says she gave God a pen. God wrote a story that she also became a great grandmother of Jesus. And then lastly, we, we, the Bible even talks about, it says, wife of Uriah. Who is that? Bathsheba. And you know the story about Bathsheba. She was having a babe. David saw her. David slept with her. And then David and her conspired. And I mean, and David conspired and killed her husband. Bad story. But Matthew wrote four of them there because Matthew said, they have a bad story just like me. And what do we learn from this is that God will forgive our sins. And so I'm going to conclude this morning from the story we read. Number one, God will forgive your darkest sins. Number two, God will use you regardless of your past. Number three, God will not leave anyone out. And number four, God can heal any situation that you are. You see, God can turn your story around today. Remember the four, four great grandmothers of Jesus. And right now, Rehab, if she was here, she will tell you, every woman of God, every person right now, no matter how you feel, she says, let God write your story. And the story that God will write, there will always be a grand ending to your life this morning. And so for every woman out there, I want to say, let's learn from Rahab this morning. And the point is this morning, give the pen. You've been writing your story and you were writing the chapters in your story and you know it was not good, disappointing. You feel depressed. You feel discouraged. But today, won't you give the pen to God and say, God, Jesus, you write the story for me in Jesus' name. Won't you bow your head with me right now? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Before I pray for you, maybe you heard my, my sermon this morning. And I want to say to you, maybe you've been writing the chapters in your book and it's not good. As I said, you down, you out, bad relationships, bad marriages, and everything is just going so wrong. And you keep every day, cry out to God, where are you? Where are you? Maybe the thing is that you've been writing your own story. The pen is in your hand. But this morning, won't you give the pen to Jesus and let him start writing your story? And you may ask, but how can I do that? Oh, I'm glad that you asked. It's so simple. All I got to do today is recognize that I'm a sinner. Recognize that I need a turn, just like I Ahab. I mean, Rahab, I need to make a turn around. It means that I repent and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I need to repent today. Then number two is the Bible says quite simple. You got to believe that Jesus died and rose again, just like her. They told her, take a scarlet cord and put it down on the window. When we see it, we will not attack you. And likewise today, we need that scarlet cord. That scarlet cord is the blood of Jesus. You got to believe this morning that Jesus came into this world. He died on the cross and he shed his blood. And so if you can believe that he did that in your heart, 
Then the third thing you do is, I confess with my mouth, Lord, save me this morning. That's all you got to say. Jesus, save me. Save me. Jesus, be Lord of my life. That's all you got to do. So I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus. And the Bible says, you are saved. So if I have to put it simply, number one, I repent. Number two, I surrender to God. And number three, I commit my life to him. And that means I'm taking the pen. And I'm giving it to God and say, Lord, now you write my story. That's what it means this morning. So if you pray that, if, if you are those persons today, and if you want me to pray with you, won't you make Jesus Lord of your life? Won't you hand this pen over to him? And if you want to do that, then just simply pray this prayer with me right now. Let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, my life was just like Rahab. A disappointing life. Lord, I'm disgusted with my life. Lord, I don't like my life. Because I was writing the chapters in my own book. But today I choose to give you the pen. Lord, I choose to repent. I choose to turn around today. And Lord, I surrender my life to you. Jesus, I believe you died. I believe you rose again. I believe you shed your blood. And through your blood, my sins are washed away. And Lord, I, I, I confess, Jesus is Lord. Save me. And from today, Lord, I want to commit my life to you and walk with you. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer this morning, we'd love to hear from you. Won't you contact us? Won't you? Uh, we can give you some information. Just contact us. I mean, on our website, www.jfwc.co.za, and just connect with us, and we would be, it would be a pleasure and honor for us to be part of your life. Amen. You welcome to the family of God. Amen. And so for the rest of the ladies and wherever else this morning, I want to just pray for you as we close this time together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you this morning. Lord, thank you for your word today, even as we learn from Rahab. And Lord, this morning, we give you the pen of our lives and say, Jesus, write the story of my life, that my life will be a blessing wherever I go in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that each one of us this week will have a blessed, wonderful week, a miraculous week, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, I pray the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, joy, health, wealth, favor, strength, mercy and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Well, we, we're so excited to, that you listened to us this morning. Lisha and I thoroughly love you. And we want to say, please connect with us. And we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.